Travel consideration provided by... Unleash the freshness. You are set booster. Down the unstoppables. He's coming out with such force. If I trip over, happening now. Seguin police are still searching for the person responsible for stealing multiple catalytic converters here at Texas Lutheran University. What they know so far about the case and what you can do to better protect your vehicle. UTSA will no longer use the phrase come and take it and has removed it from all campus buildings. And now the backlash to that controversial decision. Next at five emails sent to the school from alumni and the public. Cloud cover making all the difference in terms of temperatures today. I'll give you a rundown of what's going on outside the big differences, what temperatures will do the rest of the week through the weekend, and who's most likely to see some rain with our next cold front in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, a local high school student taken into custody after the district says that he brought a gun to school. It is happening at Steele High School in the Schertz-Siblow Universal City Independent School District. That district says two students told a staff member the student showed the gun to another person in a campus bathroom. The student later found with the gun, which was unloaded and did have a trigger lock in place, he was still taken into custody by Cibolo police. Now the district says while the student did not make any threats, they always advise students to say something if they see something and they are commending the students who came forward and talked about this incident today. In new at five Seguin police say some college students targeted at their dorm parking lot by thieves looking for catalytic converters. A black SUV investigators believe took the, the suspects away in a crime that's been happening often in our area. Japhne Gray explains what you can do to better protect your vehicle. Due to it being late at night and on the dorm, I would assume they were student vehicles that are living at Texas Lutheran. Seguin police have their hands tied in their latest stolen catalytic converter case. They say one or more people stole three catalytic converters from a dorm parking lot at Texas Lutheran University around one in the morning last Saturday. Sarah Wallace with Seguin police says they only have this blurry picture of a black SUV to go off of. It's a crime they see all too often. They go under, it takes about two, three minutes to get the catalytic converter and then they're out of there. And because catalytic converters don't have serial numbers, it's hard to track. And then they just go to a, um, a scrap place, sell them back, and they make their money back. She says most thieves go after foreign vehicles versus domestic because they can get more money. I would say 15, 20 bucks, but some can be as high as eight, nine hundred dollars. This mechanic we spoke with, who asked not to be identified, works in the metal recycling industry. With new state legislation passing in September that increases the penalty for knowingly buying stolen catalytic converters to a state jail felony, he says his company is very careful, but it is difficult to know if someone is not telling the truth. We'll give the authorities every piece of information that we have on that individual. We do not want stolen material at our yard. Police say some things to look for or listen for if you notice someone acting suspicious around vehicles. If they're lying underneath a car or a truck, or if you hear a metal on metal cutting sound like this, then you should call police. If you have any information about this case, you are urged to call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. And that was a story with a lot of questions. The bodies of two men found in an abandoned oil tanker trailer. Now investigators want to know how they died. This happening near Seguin. According to the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office, a TxDOT worker found the men yesterday. The identities of those two men have not been released yet, nor has any information on their causes of death. But if you have any details about this case, call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers at 1-877-403-TIPS. A Congressman Henry Cuellar responding to an FBI raid at his Laredo home last week. He says he took no part in wrongdoing. Cuellar posted this video on Twitter as a response to the raid. The FBI did not say what they were looking for at his house or what the investigation is all about. All they said is that it's ongoing at the moment. Congressman Cuellar has not been charged with any crime. Let's turn to COVID-19 right now, taking a look at the latest numbers in Bear County. We have 5,455 new cases reported today, 15 more deaths to report as well. 
The seven day average remains above 5,500. There are 1,277 COVID patients in the hospital, 286 on ventilators, 119, excuse me, 286 are in intensive care units, 119 are on ventilators. To wear a mask or not, it's been a big subject of debate since the beginning of the pandemic and one that's impacted schools across the nation. And while there's no federal requirement for masks in schools, doctors have said it's a practice that could drastically slow the spread of COVID-19. Parents in Virginia now suing that governor over a school mask mandate that allows parents to opt out. The argument the mandate goes against what Virginia school boards have deemed a necessary public health measure. It's just the governor overreaching uh, his authority. We will use every resource within the governor's authority to explore what, we're, what we can do and will do in order to make sure that parents' rights are protected. The lawsuit states the governor's executive order is a d in direct conflict with state law already in place that says schools should follow CDC guidelines for mitigation to the, quote, maximum extent practicable, end quote. Here at home, as cases have gone up Northside ISD, the latest district to reinstate its own mask requirements in schools. Several dozen American Airlines flights have been canceled at the San Antonio International Airport. The airline has also eliminated a number of routes scheduled for March. So far, 33 domestic flights from San Antonio are now canceled. The airline says it's the result of the ongoing issues brought on by COVID-19. Other cities are also seeing even more cancellations than we are, including the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, where some 1,500 flights have been cut from Americans' March schedule. Earlier today, we briefly made it to 59 degrees at the airport, but then the clouds moved back in and right now we're at 51 degrees. You can see way off in the distance off to the west where there's a distinct clearing line and that's where temperatures are quite a bit warmer. I mean, Eagle Pass right now at 72 degrees. Del Rio got well into the 70s. That's what all day sunshine will do. Lakey 55. Meanwhile, you look locally, Bulverde 48, Bernie 48 degrees, and these are basically high temperatures for the day. Universal City 52. Of course, the clouds making a big difference out there, but we'll all be cooling off to near 50 degrees by 10 o'clock and then overnight tonight settling down in the 40s. We're going to talk more about that temperature difference along with the next cold front that's going to head our way and some rain chances and where it's most likely to rain with that in just a bit. See you in a few minutes. Thank you, Adam. Well, come and take it. It's a slogan that was once associated with UTSA, especially their football team. That is until UTSA President Taylor Amy decided to remove that slogan from the athletic department. And that decision now sparking some backlash. Case had obtained hundreds of emails sent to Amy in the wake of that decision. Now, some were in support, but many more were against it. RJ Marquez with that story. In early August, UTSA unveiled its new $40 million athletic center. One of the focal points, a large come and take its sign, the slogan UTSA adopted in 2016 as a rallying cry for fans at games. But the sign caused a stir within some members of UTSA's faculty. A professor started an online petition to have the slogan removed because she said, quote, it embodies both anti-Mexican and pro-slavery sentiments, end quote. President Taylor Amy ultimately decided to disassociate UTSA with the phrase. Days after, he received hundreds of emails from alumni, faculty, and students. Case had obtained these emails through a public records request. And while there were many that voiced support for the president, the majority were against removing Come and Take It, referring to the move as cowardly and surrendering to cancel culture. One person wrote in part, With all due respect, sir, this is disgusting. If you're going to remove this very Texas tradition, then please remove Texas from the school name. Many said they would no longer financially support UTSA. One writing, quote, I will never donate to organizations or their affiliates that cower to liberalism and their anti-American agenda, end quote. Another writing in part, you have lost me as a donor. Good luck trying to wipe out all of our history and give in to the woke culture. Despite the backlash, supporters celebrated a win. The petition received nearly a thousand signatures and many people emailed saying it was well thought out and appropriate. Tonight at six, we dive more into what the change means to supporters. And we have the full story right now on KSAT.com. RG Marquez, KSAT 12 News. A public memorial is being planned for some time in the future. According to the family of Dr. Fernando Guerra, he is the former director of Metro Health. Jesse Degollado brings us a remembrance of the devoted doctor and the public servant. The large extended family who had surrounded Dr. Fernando Guerra is now grieving his loss. It brings tears, it brings laughter, and it's almost like a seesaw, but it's a beautiful time for 
memories of my dear Fernando. The doctor in Vietnam who also treated villagers when he wasn't attending to the wounded. The villagers, he delivered babies, he treated people who had plague and other illnesses that you wouldn't even usually see here in the United States. An experience, she says, which led to his dual careers as a pediatrician and in public health. His legacy is going to live on and on, and we're just so proud of what he did, what he accomplished. In service to the community at large, that is a life well lived. As an example, former San Antonio Mayor Henry Cisneros says many of the half a million people who flocked to Pope John Paul's mass site posed a serious health challenge. The infirm, the frail, the disabled, to be in the Pope's presence in the heat. Cisneros says Dr. Guerra's advice helped in planning the needed precautions. And much like he'd examined his own grandson, Dr. Guerra had to tell Cisneros his newborn son had a serious heart problem. This is very painful, but this child cannot live. But after corrective surgeries in his youth, John Paul Cisneros now has a career in finance in New York City, one of the many lives touched by her husband of 39 years. Something that one could only dream about having. It's very, very special. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. He will be missed. To other news now, it's called a necessary evil, working with confidential informants. They're known as criminals already in trouble with the law who help police, deputies, and prosecutors with felony cases. Law enforcement officials say they've been helpful in fighting local crime. But our defenders have found some flaws in this practice, including instances where innocent people have gone to prison or have lost their lives. Case that's Tim Gerber investigates in a defender special airing Tuesday, February 1st, right here on Case at 12. You've heard of recycling paper and plastic. What about your old tech? If you have old phones or laptops laying around the house, it could be worth some money. Up next, we'll explain how to trade it in for cash. Want to get to some breaking news now. An arrest made in a fatal shooting on Martin Luther King Day. A San Antonio police taking the suspect accused of killing one man and shooting several others into custody just moments ago. Our Lee Waldman gathering all the details for us joins us live from Public Safety Headquarters. Lee. Yeah, good evening. San Antonio Police Department tell us they arrested 18-year-old Ole Wallace. He's facing several charges. We were there as he was taken into custody and then transported to the county jail. He's facing one count of murder and four charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. All of this stemming from a January 17th shooting that happened on Spriggsdale around 7 p.m. Police say Wallace allegedly shot into a crowd of people at Santa's place, celebrating MLK Day peacefully in a parking lot. Now, five Five people total were shot that night, and we have learned one of those victims, 61-year-old Johnny Mobley, he died from his injuries. Police say they were able to track down Wallace thanks to tips from the community. They tell us this evening they don't believe there are any other suspects in, connected with this, in connection with this shooting. They tell us at this point they also do not have a motive. They don't know if Wallace was a part of this celebration, but they just know he was there when he started shooting. Live outside of Public Safety Headquarters, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Lee. Let's take a look now at stories we're working on for 6 o'clock today, one involving finances with the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Take a look. Bear County Sheriff coming to commissioners asking for more money for overtime at the jail again. But county analysts say he's burning through the money too quickly. Now the sheriff hopes to slow that down. Plus, Omicron versus Delta. We have learned a lot since this surge started, and today we're examining the differences in the symptoms of these two COVID-19 variants coming up at six o'clock. New at five, what to do with your old electronics? You know, the laptops, the printers, all those cell phones stuffed in the closets. Where should it go? Well, not to the landfill. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz looks at how to clear the clutter and maybe make a little money. When it's time to upgrade the latest, greatest tech, here's the dilemma. I don't know what I'm going to do with all this old junk. But your electronic trash could be someone else's treasure. There are a lot of different online marketplaces that make it really easy for you to sell your old computers and devices. You might want to do a little bit of research ahead of time to make sure that you're pricing it appropriately. 
even if it's broken. Someone may want it. On eBay, this MacBook Pro is selling for $350. If you don't want the hassle of listing an item yourself, online buyback sites like Buyback World and Gazelle give you a quote. When you accept the offer, you ship your gadgets to them with a prepaid shipping label. You can also donate your old electronics. If you have a pile of old computers and tablets and cell phones just collecting dust, these can be really valuable to a family that isn't able to buy them. This website, Digitunity, will match you with local pre-qualified organizations that will give your old computer new life. Donating your old cell phone or tablet to Cell Phones for Soldiers helps them provide international calling cards to troops. And the Hearing Aid Project will refurbish your old hearing aids for low-income people. Whatever you do, don't toss your old tech in the trash. Check out Earth 911 to find a local recycling location. And remember, before you give up your old electronics, be sure to erase the hard drive. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Take a look outside with live cam. The sun was out at some point. <laughs> yeah. But now it's back to gray, Adam. Oh, and it's out. It's shining bright far west of San Antonio. Actually, you don't even have to go that far west of town to really get a lot of sunshine. Let's jump right into it here. Go straight to the maps and, and take a look at that. The edge of the cloud deck this afternoon. There you have it. We're looking to the west and beyond that line of that edge of the cloud cover it was sunshine and that had a big impact on temperature. So today around noon, we briefly hit 59 degrees. Then our temperature dropped again and that's after a morning low, by the way, of 45 and notice that high below average. The average being 64 right now. We've got a string of below average days the rest of this work week. All right, these are the high temperatures today and look at the big difference. 53 New Braunfels, 77 for the high in Del Rio, 70 for the high in Uvalde, even 68 Catula, but only in the 50s, lower 50s in many locations underneath the thicker clouds, a gray and white indicating the cloud cover today and that low cloud deck where it held tight. Of course, it had a big impact on temperatures. Del Rio 77 now, Uvalde 68, Carrizo Springs 66. Meanwhile, 51 in San Antonio, Gonzalez 54, and Kerrville at 51 degrees. Now, this is what we're expecting tomorrow morning. Some upper 30s in the hill country. 37 Fredericksburg, Kerrville about 39. I think mid 40s for most of us uh, outside of the hill country. About 43 Honda, 46 Pleasanton, 44 here in San Antonio. By the afternoon, not a big warm up. We're only going to rise about 10 degrees. One reason being another cloud deck that's going to dominate our sky. So Del Rio, Eagle Pass, anybody along the Rio Grande or near it in the 70s today. But tomorrow you're going to have temperatures back down in the 50s. Uvalde 56 tomorrow, Carrizo Springs about 59. So this is what we're anticipating tomorrow, which is below average for this time of year. I mentioned before the average high 64. We're going to be in the mid 50s Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Then this weekend we get back up right near average into the 60s, about 63 to 65 for high temperatures with nothing but sunshine. So actually a beautiful, comfortable weekend is on the way. Want to talk a little bit about moisture in the air. Of course, we don't feel any mugginess out there. Dew points are only in the 40s and even a little bit drier farther to the west. And you're not going to notice any mugginess anytime soon. Actually, a weak cold front Thursday night is going to get rid of some of that moisture that's in the air and actually make us even drier. But then into next week, we could actually have a hint of humidity back in the air by Tuesday. So early next week, dew points could be back in the low 60s and you could feel a little bit of stickiness return. All right, here's the big picture. I want to talk about a disturbance that's off to the north of us. It's throwing snow from Colorado into Kansas and even parts of Oklahoma. Now this disturbance is the next one for Texas, just not our part of Texas this is going to bring snow to the panhandle and parts of North Texas in Oklahoma around here. We'll just have some clouds tomorrow and a decent amount of clouds gray, the dominant color in the sky. But I want to fast forward to Thursday night and very early Friday morning. That's our next disturbance with a weak cold front and notice a few little showers are possible here and there with that cold front. And I think the best chance is south of Highway 90. 
Even then, we're not expecting a whole lot in terms of accumulations, but at least it's something. And that's where we need the rain the most, south of San Antonio. So tomorrow, decent amount of cloud cover, but a dry day. 44 in the morning, 54 by the afternoon. So cool, long sleeves or a jacket all day long. Thursday, gray all day with that slight chance of rain. Thursday night, early Friday, a little breezy on your Friday. And I mentioned that weekend. Look at that, sunny 60s, but we will have some cool mornings in the low to mid 30s this weekend. Okay, thank you, Adam. All right, Spurs need a W. Actually, you need several of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe they'll get one tonight. We'd like to put several in a row as yeah. well, but this is a team they should beat because they're not doing as well as the Spurs. When we come back, more about the Spurs being in Houston to face their I-10 rivals and what or who is a Cowboys free agent priority coming up. San Antonio Spurs are in Houston where they will face the Rockets tonight. Both teams are struggling as the Spurs are coming off a 115-109 loss to the Sixers on Sunday night. That means it's silver and black. have only won two games in the last eight. Currently sit in 13th position in the Western Conference. The Rockets are one step lower than that, 14, which is second to last in the West and four and six in their last 10 games. Coming off of a 105-103 loss to Golden State. But that was last Friday. They've been off since then. Jakob Pertl has been one of the more consistent players for the Spurs coming off a 16th double-double against the Sixers, 25 points and 10 rebounds which surpasses his 15 in all of last year. How important is it now for Jakob to not only score, but crash the boards as well? I try to do a lot of the, the little things for the team. Um, I, I try to I be that, uh, yeah, that back anchor on defense. I try to yeah, crash offensive class every chance I get. Um, so I think that's, that's just part of my role. And then scoring has picked up a little bit this year with um, a lot of our scoring from the past couple of years um, gone on the team. Like um, a couple of us other guys had to step up, and I kind of took that um, on myself. Plus a couple of our other guys to, yeah, like I said, step it up, be more aggressive on offense, and score more. A little early on the tip time tonight in Houston, 7 p.m. for you. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. As the Dallas Cowboys wrestle with their early departure from the NFL playoffs, now the offseason work begins, and that starts with many as 21 free agents. And among those whose contract is ending, defensive end Randy Gregory appeared in 12 games and would have been a Pro Bowl selection and not been for a calf injury. But in just 12 games, Gregory was able to produce six sacks and force three fumbles. Now the question is, did the Cowboys reward him? But you also consider, have to consider J. Ron Curse, the safety, the Cowboys' leading tackler, is also a free agent after his first season of wearing the star, but keep in mind wide receiver Michael Gallup is also a free agent coming off a shortened season thanks to that torn ACL, but before that has rolled up almost 3,000 yards receiving 15 touchdowns in four seasons, but with limited cap room available, a lot of talent could be walking out the door. Sean Payton has decided to step aside after 16 seasons as a head coach in the New Orleans Saints, but stopped short of saying he's retiring, just decided he needs a break. Payton still has three years left on his contract with New Orleans, so if he wants to try another team, there'll have to be a trade involved. A very emotional press conference just got underway. I should just say, just ended here just a few moments ago, and we'll have more about that coming up tonight. And including the question is, why now? Remember, he didn't participate in one season because he was suspended for that one right. year due to the bounty gate, but still 15 seasons. This past season, a lot of people say that was his best year of coaching because Drew Brees was gone, but it takes its toll. Yeah. Could be broadcasting, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a good choice. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Tomorrow we'll start the day in the 40s and by the afternoon only in the 50s. So a cool day, long sleeves and not a whole lot of sunshine, just a little bit here and there. Gray Thursday, a few showers possible early into Friday. 60s again by the weekend. Thanks for watching the News at 5. World News up next. See you here at 6.